Welcome to the Proposal Podcast, where you get your proposal questions answered by someone who lives and breathes proposals. So I'm Ash Fox, and proposals are my life. I've been a part of 1,500 proposals. No, I have not proposed to 1,500 people, but I have been a part of helping 1,500 people, couples, with their proposals, making sure that they're perfect. And um, I've really seen what can go right, what can go wrong, and I wanted to share this with you. So I work with men and women from all over the world, from everywhere, from you know Tokyo to Chile, um, who are coming to New York City, and they want to pop the question. And they come to me for advice on what to do, what not to do, where to do it, how to do it. They need ideas. Sometimes they have an idea, and they just want me to pull it off for them because it's something a little bit elaborate or they need musicians or decorations at venues. They need they need me for that. And that's where I come in. But in doing proposals and seeing so many proposals, I really learned, you know, what works and what doesn't. And I want to share this with you so you can avoid some of the mishaps that I've seen and you can do things Right. So this is my opportunity to be in your ear and guide you through the whole process. My goal is that you can come here and you can check out the topic list. And if it's something that pertains to you, you can listen. Um, And if it doesn't, you can skip it and then go to a different topic or you can just listen to one and then one and done and you're good. Another thing you can do is submit your questions to me and I will in-depth answer your question, whatever it is. If you're living in India, if you're living in Paris, um, I will answer your proposal question. It doesn't matter um, as long as, uh, you know, we can translate into English (laughs) so I can answer it. We're good. So anyway, people that I work with, they really range ages 18 to 85. I've really worked with them all. I work with men proposing to women most of the time. So if I'm referring to, you know, the guy and his girlfriend, I probably will do that a lot. And that's because that's the majority of my client base. And that's usually who I'm talking to. I'm usually talking to men. But I also work with a lot of women proposing to women. And I work sometimes with women proposing to men. It's 2018. So everybody, you know, can get, everyone can get engaged. Everyone can get married. And that's great. Whoever wants to propose should propose. So I'm here to help you no matter what kind of proposal you're doing. Um, so, you know, bring me your questions and we'll we'll get going. Each week, I plan to discuss a specific topic under the umbrella of proposals and more. But um, we'll go over things like, you know, where do I even start? So that's what I plan to talk about this time. Where do I even start getting ideas? What do I do? I'll answer questions like how to pick a ring, how to get her to dress up for the big day, um, whether or not to involve family in the proposal, you know, all the mistakes that you can make, the do's, and we'll just really get into it. So looking forward to getting going. Here we go. Where to start is sometimes the most overwhelming part of the whole thing because you're having so many thoughts coming to you. Like, how am I going to ask her dad? Or, you know, like, what if her mom tells her or... I need I need her best friend's help, but the best friend might say something to tip her off. So what am I going to do? Or how am I going to get her to that location? You know, she's the type of girl who plans everything out, and she's always dragging me here and there. And how am I going to say to her, well, we got to go here right now? And I see guys getting very stressed out w- way too soon, just overwhelming themselves with too many questions. So let's just... I'm going to break it down. That's my goal here on this podcast is just break things down, simplify. Um, A lot of times I'm paring things down for you. I'm not the type who loves to add a lot of bells and whistles. I only like to add in things if I feel they are significant and they're really going to make the proposal more sentimental or just show they're relevant in some way. So, okay, so where to start? The first place to start is making sure that you know your partner. What do you know about your partner? Who are they? Okay. If you don't, if a bunch of things don't come to mind right now, you probably shouldn't be proposing right now. Like I don't like to tell people and I never tell my clients like whether or not they should be proposing. That's for them to decide. They're coming to me because they know they want to propose. But I'm telling you guys right now, if you don't have a sense of who your partner is and you can't name for me right now, like 10 things she likes or he likes, Maybe it's time to wait before you propose. 
So the first place to start is just who is your partner? So like, let's just start making a list. Let's think of different things. So what's your partner's favorite food? Where's their favorite restaurant? What's her favorite movie? What's her favorite TV show? Is she somebody who loves crowds? <laughs> like, does she like going to, you know, crowded bars or does she like going to like touristy locations, things like that? Is she an extrovert? Does she, is she like the life of the party? Is she like to be the center of attention? Or is she, you know, an introvert? Is she somebody who really likes quiet time, reading alone? You know, is she that kind of person? Is she a sports person? kind of girl? Is she a nature girl who loves hiking? You know, is she a city girl who loves like getting dressed up and going to the, you know, the latest restaurant opening? Is she an artsy girl? Like, you know, who is she? Who is he? If you're proposing to a guy, just who is your partner? Make kind of make a little character study of who they are, like everything you know about that. Now, how sentimental are they? Most people are pretty sentimental, I would say. Like, I mean, even if they say that they're not, they probably are. So, you know, think about that. So first step is, what does your proposal like? Let's make the list of all the things they like. You know, like I said, movies, TV shows, sports, music. Figure that all out. Foods. <laughs> okay. Then think about what are their favorite places, too. What are their favorite places? What are their favorite cities? What's their favorite vacation that they ever went on? What place have they told you they've always wanted to go to? What's their favorite just like local coffee place? Okay, so the next step is thinking about your history together. Okay, where did you meet? So did you meet at a bar? Were you set up? Did you meet on a dating app? You might think to yourself, oh gosh, we met on a dating app. It's so unromantic. Okay, listen. Okay, most people today meet on dating apps, so don't even worry about that. Most people meet on dating apps. It's yeah, so there's nothing to be there's nothing to be shy about there. And believe it or not, you can make that really cute and romantic. You can you can make the fact that you met met on a dating app part of your proposal in a sweet way. I've seen it before. I had a couple who met on Coffee Meets Bagel, and he made this really cute little um centerpiece at his proposal that had like the little coffee bagel thing and said like you're my you know you're my bagel I don't know it was very cute he brought it into his proposal in a cute way um there's other ways you can do it so I had a guy who went back in time to their first messaging on tinder where they met and he knew the day that he first messaged her or that she first messaged him. He made that the date of his proposal. And the cute thing about that is she didn't even know what date that was. But then the day that he proposed, he was down on his knee and he was like, and do you know what today is? Like, she's like, oh, she doesn't know. She just thinks, oh my God, she's proposing right now. It's like, this is the day that we first started talking on the app. And that, you know, that's really sweet. It's a little callback to that first moment of connection there. So um, when you're thinking of where to start, you got to think about who your partner is. And then you can think about Lots of important, you know, the different important milestones and dates in your relationship. So some of them are, you know, where did you meet? How did you meet? What was the day that you met? What, were, what was the time that you met? Who connected you or what were you, did you meet because you were connected through something that you really love to do together? So I had this client, had this guy, Michael, and he and his girlfriend met in college doing Model United Nations. And they loved it. That's how they met. That's how they connected. And so for his proposal, he took her to on a little tour of the United Nations in New York City. And so she just thought, like, oh, this is so cool. Like, we're going to see the United Nations. She didn't think anything of it. And then when they were outside in front of the building, he grabbed her hand, dropped to his knee, and he proposed to her outside, like, in front of all the cool flags and the beautiful, you know, rectangular building there. And she was totally caught off guard. And it was really special. It was a very simple proposal, but it was really special because this is something that they shared together. And it was – the proposal was just united around this theme of – Model United Nations. That's how they met. So that that was that was his theme there. So can you can make one element the theme for your proposal. So don't overwhelm yourself thinking I got to bring this in. She likes this. She likes that. Da, 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 I got to bring it all together. You don't have to do it that way. The best thing to do is to start broad and then pare down. So like I said, let's go back to your list of the things that your partner likes. Let's say we determine that your partner is someone who loves to be the center of attention. Okay. And they love their favorite city in the world is, you know, they've always wanted to go to Tokyo. They love Japanese food. Okay. And let's say you know that they love 
country music. <laughs> so you might think to yourself, all right, I'm going to take her to Japan. I'm going to propose to her on a billboard, you know, in front of everyone. And there's going to be, I'm going to have like country music, a country band, like playing for her right in the center of the crowd. Okay. So that's fine. You can brainstorm and get that crazy. Once you kind of take all these different attributes about your partner and the things that they like, you can then like kind of collage them together and come up with like some really super grand over the top proposal. I think that that's great to start, <laughs> to start with, really think big, but then we want to kind of like pare it down because it's silly to do just so many. Th- you don't have to do everything. You don't have to like pile on a bunch of different things. You got to really think of what would they want. Okay, so that's the next thing. Just because you have the budget to do something or just because you have a really awesome opportunity to do something. Like let's say you have a friend who works at the sports arena and he's going to get you the jumbotron for free and whatever. (laughs) And you can propose on there, but your girlfriend is not like the biggest sports fan. Okay. That's the wrong proposal for you. That just is going to show your partner that you don't even know them or what they like. So just because you can do something doesn't mean you do it. Um, I had another guy recently, he said to me that he really wanted to do a rooftop proposal because he's really into all that. And then he thought to himself, He listened to one of my videos online. He was just like, you know, I heard you say the most important thing is to do what your partner would like, not what you would like. And it's true. You know, he decided I'm not going to propose to her on a rooftop because I don't think she really liked that. He ended up proposing to her inside the Plaza Hotel with her family there. And she was really happy and she loved it. And he realized, you know, that that would be right for her, not proposing on a rooftop. So you got to think about your partner and what they would like, not about yourself. Okay, the next Another place where I see people go wrong is they think that creativity is like the most important thing. So a lot of people proposing stress themselves out over how creative they need to be. They think, you know, I got to reinvent the wheel here. I got to do something super creative for my partner. I really have to just wow them with my creativity. She's not going to want, you know, a run-of-the-mill proposal that all of her friends have. That's true, sure. Um, But I got to think of something really creative. Okay. Creativity is not the point. Uh, Romance is the point. That really is just it. Simple romance always wins over creativity. Don't let creativity or feeling like you have to reinvent the wheel get in the way of being romantic. So my proposal tip of the week is be the Romeo. And here are a couple prototypes, proposer prototypes I've seen who are the guys, you do, you know, you don't want to be this guy. You want to be the Romeo. You want to be, you want to embody your inner James Bond. You want to be cool, collected, and confident because you're going in there like, you know, 100% she's going to say yes and you're ready. You just want to sweep her off her feet and just wow her. So she's got this really great story to tell and this beautiful memory that she's going to be so excited about and forever. The first one is the maximalist. He is completely unrealistic and has no concept of what's actually possible or what his budget is. <laughs> so he's just throwing crazy ideas out there. I want fireworks. I want monkeys, you know, like all kinds of crazy things that he, you know, just because he thinks that she might like it, he's going to do it. He really wants to wow her, but it's a little, he's kind of missing the point of who she is. He wants to kind of show off. So that's one type. The next one is the delusional guy who wants to propose before he even knows she's ready. So he's ready to kind of um, manipulate his partner into getting married and or keep her (laughs) by proposing to her. And um, yeah, he he needs to take a step back. Or he's a nice guy, a well-intentioned guy who maybe his girlfriend's in college and he's really just as excited and wants to make sure that they can be together forever. But it's really not the right time in her life. He wants to propose, but his girl isn't ready. So you don't want to be that guy. Then there's the let's get this over with guy who's all about convenience, (laughs) who's thinking, I'll do the proposal, you know, right after work, like when I get home, or I'll do the proposal in bed. You don't want to be that guy. And then there's the neurotic guy who fixates and worries about all kinds of elements that don't even matter, like how is she going to get a manicure? Like he's worrying and stressing himself out and like sweating and losing weight over and stressing himself and running to the bathroom <laughs> because he's concerned about all these little things that don't matter and just drives himself into a tizzy. So the guy you want to be is really the smooth operator, you know, the Don Juan, the Romeo, whatever you want to think of him as, Clint Eastwood, the Marlboro Man, you know, whomever. This guy is calm. He's confident. He's realistic. He's action-oriented. And he knows 100% 
that his partner will say yes. You're not going into this if you don't know 100%. The answer is going to be yes. So thank you so much for listening. Um, I'm really excited to get going here and answering all of your all these topics on proposals and trying to offer you as much value as I can to make things a little less stressful, to calm your nerves. Like I said, be your partner in crime here. I'm going to help you carry this out. So please feel free to reach out to me on Instagram, Ash Fox Proposals. That's me. You can DM me your questions. I'm happy to answer them here, even if they're detailed. Like, we'll get into it. You know, even if you're living in India, you got an idea, maybe you're having some trouble with her family or something, you need some advice, I'm happy to get into it. And hopefully that'll be helpful to other people too. So send me your questions. If you have topics you'd like me to cover, feel free to send them to me. I'm excited to um, get going. I really want this to be a conversation and a chance to put you at ease, calm your nerves, and make things go as smoothly as they possibly can for you and make you really come up with the best proposal possible. Thanks for listening and uh, feel free to subscribe on iTunes and um, look forward to talking to you soon. Bye.